Again, welcome to Data Science course. In this lectures, we will go through machine learning, uh, algorithm, and the main concept also. So our main object, our objective is to perform the key data mining and machine learning operations, compare and also contrast, supervise and unsupervised learning. Also the difference between training and testing data. We're also going to explain what is a dimensionality reduction and also principal component analysis. So we start with machine learning. We say machine learning is the use of data pattern recognition algorithm to solve problems. So the goal of machine learning is using data and some algorithms on the data to perform a task. So today, most popular programming language provide libraries that contain functions programmers can use to perform machine learning operation. Example would be a Python language where we have again machine learning library files that we can use to perform almost any type of machine learning tasks, such as data classification, data cross story, predictive analysis, and data association. The concept of data classification is we may have a what we call the training data. A training data is a data that also have the class label or the target variable. What we mean is that we may have some attributes, values, and also this data set is about patients that have disease A. So we have all the attributes to values and our target variable will be whether the patient have the disease A, yes or no, or true or false. So that's our target variable. With this mod, uh, data set, we can use it to build a model. Then later we use the test set to again to test it. We may again talk details about uh, classification algorithm. We have different types of uh, classification algorithm. The next is data cross story. In data cross story, we don't have a training set. So we just have our data set. So the goal is to find the similarities in the data set. If two values are similar, then we group them together. Predictive analysis concept is the same as data classification. But in predictive analysis, again, we have a data set and we can build a model. Based on that model, we can be able to predict, predict in the future. Data association is finding the association between two or more variables or a relationship between two or more variables. Example, if a customer buy peanut butter, what is the chance that he may buy bread? And normally in data association algorithm, we use something we call the confidence and support level. These are two threshold values that we can use to determine the, the strength of the association relationship. Now, because of their widespread use and popular, popularity, uh, this course will examine the machine learning using Python and also R programming language. And I think today, Python and R is the most uh, common tools that we use in data science field. So many visual programming environments also uh, are variable, such as rapid manner. In rapid manner, I really don't have to know the packages or know the coding. It's more or less a graphical user interface. So you click and drag and run the code or command driven interface uh, concept. Uh, we also have what we call the orange. We also have Waker and so many different types of, uh, again, visual programming environment. So yeah, we say machine learning versus artificial intelligence. We will say that artificial intelligence is the science of making intelligent machines the science of making intelligent machines that can perceive visual items, recognize voices, make decisions and more. So by looking at this definition, we can say machine learning is, is a, it's an artificial intelligence. It's part of artificial intelligence because with machine learning algorithm, we can make a decision based on the, on the algorithm that uh, we need algorithm and data and based on the run again, 
you can make a decision. So here we say machine learning is an application of AI. In other words, there are many different applications of AI, of which machine learning is one of them. So we can see an example here, artificial intelligence, machine learning, fossil logic, computer vision, autonomous vehicles. Actually, autonomous vehicles uses machine learning algorithm most of the time. Natural language processes also use machine learning algorithm. So types of machine learning. Here we say machine learning is the use of data pattern recognition algorithm to solve problems. So developers classify machine learning algorithm into the following. We have supervised learning, which is the classification. We have unsupervised learning, which is clustering. We also have reinforced learning and also deep learning. So suppose uh, we know uh, supervised learning is the use of an algorithm that uses a label dot data. So again, suppose we have a training data set, that means we have all the attribute value, and also we know what is the target variable. If this variable is about patients having a disease A, yes or no, we have that target variable result already, target variable. So that's why we say so supervised learning is the use of an algorithm that uses a label data to produce a translating data set that an algorithm can use to learn how to identify patterns. So the common solution that use supervised learning include data classification. And I think data classification is the common supervised learning. So unsupervised learning is the use of algorithm to identify patterns within data that does not have a labeled data. So this data set doesn't have a target variable. We don't know the outcome. So our main goal is to find a similarity between the data and then we separate it into two. So we say common solution that you use unsupervised learning include data clustering and also data association. The next one is the reinforcement learning. And this is the use of feedback loops to reward correct predictions and to punish mistakes as shown here. So we have a we build a model. Then we apply a data on the model. Now, if the decision is correct, then we give the model a reward feedback. If the decision is not correct, then we punish it. So it's like training a dog. If the dog do good thing, you give him rewarding. If you do a bad thing, you punish the dog. So those are the three major machine learning algorithms. But within that, we have so many. For example, classification, we have maybe over 10 algorithms. Cross story, the same concept. Association is a little bit fewer. Then we have the reinforcement learning. Deep learning can fall between classification and cross story, depends because deep learning is the concept of neural networking. So these are some of the algorithms. Here we have the apron is a data association, DB scan, dot data cross story, and we explain each, each category on supervised. And decision tree classification is a data classification and it's a supervised. We also have a decision tree regression. Both are again, can be classification, but regression normally the target variable that we want to predict is a quantitative data. It's a quantitative data. With decision tree, it can be a nominal data for what we want to predict. Let's say true or false, yes or no. So again, these are some of the algorithms. We have a naive base and the logistical regression which is unsupervised and it's predictive analysis. K means it's data cross story unsupervised. And K nearest neighbor is data classification supervised. So we start with the supervised machine learning. And here we say supervised machine learning is the use of an algorithm that uses a label data to produce a training data set so again, a labeled data or a training data set 
It's a data set that we know the target variable, the output, we have the results. So it's very easy to use a training set to build a model. So training data set that an algorithm can use to learn how to identify patterns. A solution that uses a supervised machine learning approach will first specify a training data set from which the model can learn to match patterns. So the training data set must have values for the independent variables that will be analyzed, as well as the correct results for the dependent variable. And here we see that mostly developers normally use 70 to 80% of the data set as a training set. The next step, we specify the testing data set that the model can use to test its accuracy. So like the training data set, the testing data must have values for the independent variables with which it will perform its analysis and also dependent variable that the model will compare to its results. And we say here the training data set normally consists of 20 to 30 of the data set. And then we can use this model with new data to classify data or predict result. So the step one, again, supervise. We have to use the training data set to create our model or develop our model. Then step two, we are going to train the model by using the testing data to test the model to step three. So training the model means we are building the model. The test data set or testing the model means we are looking for the accuracy or correct prediction. And these are some of the tools we can use to measure predictions, accuracy, and also confusion metrics. So this example of a training data set. A training data set, again, is a data set that also have a value for the target mm -hmm. variable. If I have a data set and this data set is about predicting whether a customer will be a trite, then we may have a nominal value for that attribute, either yes or no. So from there, we can use this training data to build our model. Then next we find where we can get the test data to test the model. So here we see the purpose of a training data set within a supervised machine learning is to teach or train the model how to correctly recognize data patterns. Also assume, for example, your goal is to identify incoming email as valid or spam. To start your training data set as shown will contain various email attributes and for each record, whether the message was valid or not. Now, assigning training and testing data set in R. So we have a very short R code here. So this will be our object. Uh, I'll say the memory location, DF. Now we have a method read.csv, comma separated value. But read, again, read, will make it possible for us to get the input. So here, the argument will be the file that we are re reading from. And this file name is Bryce.data.csv. Now, after we read the data, that means we have all the data from Bryce.data.csv. We store it in a DF. Now we are going to split it into mm -hmm. training and test set. Again, training is used to build a model. Test set is used to measure the model performance. So here we have indices. We are using sample. Then degree of freedom, learn uh, one to n row as in intercept. Now 0 0.7 times n row degree of freedom. So next we assign the DF with the indices from one to seven. Then DF 
negative indices one to seven. So we're almost done with our training data and testing data. So we print the total rows, how many rows we have. Then print the to training rows. And so here we have n row. Then the testing will also be n row test data. So if we run the program, Again, this is R, this is what we get. First, we print the total rows. Then second, we print the number of rows we have in the DF, which is CC2. Then print the training rows. Then we print the unroll for training data. and also and row for test data. Now the next step is determine the accuracy of a supervised learning algorithm. And here we say after a supervised machine learning algorithm trains a model, after it has trained the model, the program should use a test data set to determine the model's accuracy, very important. So like the training data set, the test data set contains attribute values for the independent variables, which the model will examine, as well as correct values for the dependent variable, which the model can compare to its result. So that's the first step. Use the training model to build the system, to build the model. The next step now, we have to test the model to see how good it is. So we test the model by using a test data set. The test data set doesn't have the target variable. So a supervised machine learning program uses test attribute to determine a result, which it then compared to the known result. So by comparing the number of correct prediction, to the total number of records in the test data sets, we can determine the model's accuracy. So accuracy equal to the number of correct prediction divided by total number of prediction. So confusion, confusion matrix help us a lot in again measuring the outcome of the analysis. So here we say to help you better understand the prediction, the model got correct as well as the prediction that were wrong. So we can display a confusion matrix name because the matrix summarize the worst prediction that were correct and also wrong and confused. So we consider the following confusion matrix. In this case, the first variable the model got 784 prediction correct and mean 68. Likewise, for the second variable, the model got 472 correct and mean 77. And we should note that the number of items in the confusion matrix should equal that in the test data set. So the classification programs present throughout this test normally display the model's accuracy and also confusion matrix. So the next step is scaling a data set. Now here, depending on our data set, there may be times when the different attributes have a different aligned scales. So for example, quality attribute may be based on the values one to five, whereas satisfaction attribute, the values is one to 10. So we have to be careful to improve the results of your machine learning and data mining operations. You should assign or align the attribute scales. Next, we move to dimensionality reduction. This is one of the important topic in machine learning. Because again, if we have an algorithm to perform a specific task, if the code is too much, it will take time for the code to finish execution. 
Now, if the code, so here we say as the size of data set increases, so does the time required to process the data, as well as the, no, the amount of RAM required to hold it. Now, depending on your data set, there will often be times when one or more of the independent variables within the data set do not influence. Uh, so, depending again on uh, data set, there will be often times when one or more of the independent variables within the data set do not influence the dependent variable. So, dimensionality reduction, we have algorithm that we can use again to reduce the data dimension. So if I have a data set and the dimension is 200, 300 attributes, uh, after some time maybe I may notice that not all the attributes are important. So we have to remove some of them. But again, variables with a correlation value near zero have no correlation. Increasing or decreasing one variable value have no impact on the second. Also, Variables with correlation value of negative one have a strong negative correlation. If you increase the value of one variable, the value of the second variable will decrease proportionally. So that will move us to principal component analysis. This is a special algorithm that again we use to select our data set to reduce the attributes. So the goal of a principal component analysis is to be able to develop a code that can perform a very complex task, but the code will be very, very short as, short as possible. So to perform data set dimensionality reduction, analysis will often use a technique called the primary component analysis, PCA, to determine and select the key independent variables. So PCA is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm, and we are going to discuss this in a few weeks to come. We also have the linear discriminant analysis. Now, the same concept of dimensionality reduction, uh, the principal component, component analysis is for supervised. So here we said to reduce the dimensionality, dimensionality of data set, the analysis often perform principal component analysis and unsupervised machine learning algorithm. Like most of the machine learning concepts, there are many algorithms approaches to perform dimensionality reduction. And we may go through many of them as time goes on. Also, the linear discriminant analysis is a second approach that uses again supervised machine learning. So this will lead to hot encoding. So first is that one way to exchange test values to numeric is to edit the data set using Excel. You can also use the programming language such as pattern and or R. And if I want to make any change to the test value, I have to edit it. Now we might be tempted to perform simple changes such as converting test values, males and females, to one and zero. One represent male, zero represent female. And the value such as black, white, and other to the value such as three, two, one. Mostly, for example, a neural networking algorithm or deep learning, we can convert our data in tests to numbers or values. So although such substitution accomplish the goal of getting numeric values, it has the problem of introducing ordinal values, which also imply a numeric order. So ordinal, Values would be a, a data set that is in order. For example, grading in a school, A, B, C, D, F. So this example of a coding. So here we say to avoid such other implication, developers use a technique called a hot encoding, which rather than assigning ordinal numbers, Instead, assign binary vector values. In this case of male and female, you might use the following vectors, male one zero, female zero one. Black ones for black, white, and other, we may have black one zero zero, white zero one zero, and other will be zero zero one. Since one is diagonal in the matrix, yeah, that's good. So uh, hot encoding with Python, so here we can see that the first thing we do is to 
import the uh, SKLearn, which is the scikit-learn uh, for machine learning package. We assign the three values data to the variable data. Then we print the data. So we can see black, white, order. Then we print the data and we get one, one, then one, which is not diagonal. We also we will go through Hanson Google TensorFlow lab programming library. TensorFlow is one of the common and popular deep learning uh, application, which again. It's a open source application and we will go through that in the future. So the key terms we learn in these lectures, we should know what is artificial intelligence. That's the science of making intelligent machines that can perceive visual items. Also recognize voice, make decisions and more. Machine learning is an application of artificial intelligence. We also should know what is classification. A classification is a supervised machine learning solution that assign data attempt to a specific categories. And cross summary will be an unsupervised machine learning solution that group related data attempts. And deep learning is a higher rank to the structure process that leverage layers of machine learning for which the output of the one layer becomes the input to the next. We also talk about machine learning, the use of data pattern recognition algorithms to solve problems. Then we also talk about reinforcement machine learning, the use of feedback loops to again reward or punish correct or wrong predictions. We should also know what is a supervised learning, a machine learning technique that uses training data set to teach the model how to perform a task. Now, the use of an algorithm that uses label data to produce a training set from which the algorithm can learn. Then we have the test data set, and that's a data set with predicted variables and correct results for the dependent variable that is used by machine learning. So, testing data set, a data set that contains the values for independent variables as well as values for the transparent. And dependent variable that a supervised learning algorithm uses to test the accuracy of its model. And so we also have the training data set on supervised learning. This is a machine learning technique that does not use a training data set. So this will be at the conclusion of our lectures. Again, in this lecture, we learn the basic concept of machine learning. Uh, algorithms and also we went through some of the few terminologies so again we meet in our next lectures and again wish everybody the best and thank you